Disney's wonderful world of music. I'm Kristen. And I'm Michael. Today we're going to discover everything there is to know about music. Everything? Well, a lot. Together we'll explore all kinds of music. Classical, folk, rock, and jazz. But before we begin, try this. Just try to imagine a world without music. No music? Well, that would make dancing a little tough. <laughs> Movies would be pretty boring. So would TV. Could you have a party without music? My parents wouldn't be able to play their old albums. <laughs> Michael, forget it. Life without music is just unthinkable. Music gives life color. Fun. Excitement. So now that we agree that music's a big part of our lives, let's find out more about it. We'll find out how music is made. We'll meet members of the instrument families. But first, you've heard the song Zippity Doo Dah, right? Zippity Doo Dah, Zippity A. Do, 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 zip, 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 what a wonderful zip, day. Do, 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 zip, Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity Doodah was such a, a versatile song. Cool, huh? Each of those styles has things in common. Rhythm, melody, harmony. Those are the basic elements of music. Let's take a closer look and listen. Sound is everywhere, but it can't be called music unless it's organized. Rhythm organizes the sound into a pattern. This is a simple rhythmic pattern. It's organized, but it's boring. Now I'll emphasize every second and fourth beat. Slightly more interesting, but still too predictable. But what if we add syncopation? Syncopation is the change in the rhythm that's unexpected and... Yeah, unexpected. Now that's more like it. The rhythm is more complex with long and short beats and rests when there's no beat at all. Does this sound familiar? That's the rhythm pattern for zippity doo dah. If you combine rhythm with notes in a particular order, you have a melody. This is also called the tune. It's what you remember when you hear a song. If we add more notes that enrich the melody, it's called harmony. Harmony adds depth, color, and style to the music. Rhythm, melody, and harmony. Put them all together, you've got music. And if you put it together with a CD that sells or a song you hear on the radio, you've got pop music, music that's popular. Did you know 200 years ago in Europe, Mozart was considered a pop musician? It's true, and here's what pop music sounds like today. Do, 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 do
We all know that good basketball takes teamwork. After all, there's only so much one person can do. Well, music takes teamwork, too. It takes a lot of people working together to make good music. We'll take the rebound, Michael. Let's start with the composer. People like Bach and Beethoven lived hundreds of years ago. And George Gershwin, Duke Ellington, Carole King, and the Beatles are more modern. They're all composers. They make up music. Some composers write their music and decide which instrument or voice plays or sings each note. Other composers compose their music very simply and hand it over to an arranger. The arranger takes the basic song and decides how it should be played. Which instruments will participate? Will it be for a band, an orchestra, or a rock group? Now the music is ready, but before everybody can play, somebody has to be the leader. A band has a leader, and an orchestra has a conductor to keep them all together. Conductors use a stick called a baton that's easily seen by the musicians. Our movements and facial expressions tell the players when to start or stop, or how fast, slow, loud, or soft to play. You could say that a conductor plays the orchestra like a musician plays an instrument. Finally, you need musicians to play the instruments that the composer and arranger have chosen. Sometimes there are solos where a musician gets a chance to show off his or her skills, like you were doing, Michael, with basketball. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time, at last, to meet the families of musical instruments. The string family. The woodwind family. The brass family. The rhythm and percussion family. The, the boys family. All music, all sound, in fact, is made the same way. Something vibrates. It's that simple. When something vibrates, it makes a sound. You know what vibrates in the stringed instruments? Um, the strings? <laughs> That's right, Michael. Excellent answer. Stringed instruments make their sounds with vibrating strings. A longer, thicker, or looser string will make a low note. Shorter, thinner, or tighter strings make higher notes. These are the four most important stringed instruments. The violin, viola, cello, and double bass. As you can see, they look alike. They're just larger and smaller versions of the same basic shape and construction. There are two ways to play a stringed instrument. The musicians can pull a bow across the strings or pluck the strings with their fingers. This plucking is called by its Italian name, pizzicato. Woodwinds are a family of instruments you blow into. They have long sound pipes with lots of little holes in them. You make different notes by pushing down keys or covering up the holes with your fingers. But wait a minute. If all music is made by something vibrating, what's moving in the woodwind instruments? All woodwinds have a tube or sound pipe. The player makes the air in the pipe vibrate by blowing into a mouthpiece or across one end of the pipe. The major woodwind instruments are the flute, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, and saxophone.
all kinds of music, especially my favorite groups. But there's music that was written two or three hundred years ago that's so beautiful, we still enjoy it today. <laughs> There's another family of instruments that you blow through to make music. They're shiny and metal and make a bright, loud sound. I think you're talking about the brass instruments, but they don't always play loud. They're actually quite sensitive. But what vibrates in the brasses? We'll get to that, but let's look at the instruments first. Brass instruments are actually long metal tubes with a mouthpiece at one end and a bell shape at the other. And yes, something does vibrate. It's the air coming through the player's lips. The mouthpiece focuses the sound and directs it through the tube. These are the four major brass instruments. The trumpet, the trombone, the French horn, and the tuba. Let's listen to a little brass. The other musical family is the rhythm and percussion instruments. We divide this family into two groups, the non-melodic percussion instruments, the ones that can keep the beat for the other instruments. And the melodic percussion instruments. The ones that can keep rhythm and carry a tune. The percussion family is very large, with members from nearly every culture and continent. The most common percussion instrument is an American invention, the drum set. With a bass drum, snare, tom-toms, and cymbals, one drummer can do the work of four. Congas are the South American cousins of the drum set. Congas come in sets of two or three and can make a wide variety of sounds. Melodic rhythm and percussion instruments include the two most popular instruments in the world. Can you guess what they are? They're the piano and the guitar.
I'm using the last kind of instrument right now. But not to make music, I'm using it to speak. That's what happens when you force air up from your lungs past your vocal cords. They vibrate and make a sound. You can either talk or you can sing. The human voice is the oldest instrument ever used to create music, and singing is the most personal form of music. Vocalists may sing alone. They can sing in pairs. That's called a duet. That's called duet. Or they can sing in any combination they want. When a lot of singers sing together, it's called a chorus or choir. It's called a chorus. Choirs often divide singers into four parts. Women are either sopranos or altos. And men are either tenors or basses. This gives a multi-layered sound. We talked earlier about composers and arrangers, but a lot of the world's music was never written down at all. And the people who made it up never got credit for it because they weren't musicians. In fact, they were just ordinary working people who made up music because they liked it. They wrote about life and love, work and play, and everyday joys and sorrows. Their music is called folk music, and it's the music of the people. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me, for I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me, for I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Part of appreciating music is sharing it. One way is if I sing a song, then you hear it and remember it. That's how folk songs have lived for generations. Another way to share music is to make it up together. Jazz musicians get together to play, but they're never quite sure what's going to happen until it's happening. And then there's music that's written down, composed. To learn this music, you have to learn to read music. That's not as hard as it sounds. To read words, everyone learns that letters are symbols that stand for sounds. Put those sounds together, and you get words. Decode the symbols, and you're reading. Music is also made of symbols that stand for sounds. Different notes, how high or low they are, how long to play them, and when to rest. Decode these symbols, and you're reading music. This has been fun, but I think we better go over what we've learned so we don't forget all of it. OK, let's see. Music is made up of rhythm. That's the beat that keeps the music moving. Then there's melody. And that's the tune that sticks in your mind, and you end up singing the next day. And then there's harmony. Those are the notes you play along with the melody to make it sound better. Now, do you remember the players on the musical team? I think so. The composer, the arranger, the conductor, and, and... The musicians. Of course, the musicians. But I do remember the different styles of music that we heard today. There was classical, pop, jazz, and folk. In fact, I'm going to grab my guitar right now and make a folk song. Good idea, Michael. Put some music in your life. And you put some music in your life. Just one thing. 
Do you know how to play the guitar? No, but if you hum a few bars, I can fake it. Thank <laughs> you.